grandkids. Thanks for watching today. I wanted to uh, tell a story about myself, a, a little short story. Prior to the internet, I used to do a lot of inexpensive hobbies. I didn't have a lot of money. And I'd spend hours out in the yard with a little two inch telescope was trying to find a nebula or a star cluster or whatever. And I did a lot of hobbies like that. I, one, one time I took several weeks and I was writing every American idiom that I could think of, you know, and wondering where they came from. Well, didn't really have the internet when I wrote this list and I always wondered how I would go about finding out where some of these sayings came from. I think when I, at one point in that list I had about 130 of them written down. Well, I don't know what happened to the list anymore and I don't really care anymore anyway, but I, uh, I did find this book and uh, Breverton's Nautical Curiosities, A Book of the Sea by Terry Breverton. And in it are a bunch of sayings, and it talks about the nautical place that they came from, and I thought I'd share a few of them with you, because it was kind of neat. So, down the hatch. We say this as a toast when raising glasses to drink alcohol. Or some people say it when they have to take medicine or something. But its origins are maritime as the ship appears to consume cargo as it passes down through the hatch into the hold. Another one, which I don't hear very often anymore, and it's a little uh, a little PG, but I'm going to tell you. I've got a couple of them that are PG, but I'll tell, tell this one to you anyway. Freeze the balls off a brass monkey. Or cold enough to freeze the balls off a brass monkey. The monkey was a small brass tray with, which held a pile of iron cannonballs next to the guns. In extreme cold, the different coefficients of expansion of brass and iron meant that sometimes the neatly piled cannonballs would move and roll out of the tray. Weird, right? Another one here is a, a loose cannon. When you talk about a loose cannon, it's like somebody you don't know what they're going to do. They're not. Uh, and well, it explains it here. An unsecured cannon in a storm could do untold damage to men and the ship as it rolled about. The term now means an unorthodox person who can cause poten potential damage. Another one is kick the bucket. That's a kind of a slang term for somebody kicked the bucket, they died. In the absence of a scaffold, men were sometimes hanged standing on a bucket or cask. To drop them quickly, the bucket was simply kicked away. So. Over a barrel. If you have someone over a barrel, they are in a position where they have little influence over their fate. Before the development of modern resuscitation techniques, a near-drowned person was placed face down over a barrel which was then rolled vigorously back and forth in an attempt to revive him by draining the water from his lungs. That sounds terrible. The three sheets to the wind is a term I've heard that means you're totally wasted. And three sheets to the wind, almost totally drunk. A sheet is a line used for trimming a sail to the wind. There's only one sheet on four and a half sails and there are just two on a square set on Square sail set on a yard arm. On a Bermuda rig vessel, there are two sheets for the jib foresail and one for the mainsail. Thus, a drunken man, even if he had three sheets to trim his sails and steer his course, would still be too unsteady to steer a straight course. And the last one would be under the weather. Uh, under the weather, a lot of people say, oh, they're feeling under the weather. It, it means that they were, they're feeling sick. Before radar, all ships had to keep watch for the approach of other vessels. We, we still do. The seamen's 
standing watch on the weather side. Of the, well, that they would put a guy outside. We don't do we don't do that very often anymore. Maybe if there's fog, but the seamen standing watch on the weather side of the bow would become tired of the constant pitching of the ship and the spray and wind blowing in his face. Boats pitch up and down more at the bow and stern, and he was also facing the weather often in stormy conditions. Consequently, he was under the weather. This miserable job came to lend us the phrase that signifies we are feeling ill. Passengers aboard ships become seasick most frequently during times of rough seas and bad weather. Seasickness is caused by the constant rocky motion of the ship. Sick passengers go below deck, which provides shelter from the weather. I just thought it was kind of interesting. There's some other ones. Maybe I'll 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 do this again sometime with this book. Uh, it's interesting enough to maybe pull out a couple more times. But I just thought it was kind of funny, and I thought maybe somebody would get a kick out of seeing that. Thanks for watching, grandkids. And anybody else that decided to tune into this. Just a quick note about these videos that I'm doing on the boat. You'll probably hear some background noise and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I, I, I'm in the absolutely quietest place on the, on the boat and uh, it's dark outside right now so I can't, I can't do a video outside. You wouldn't be able to see me. And it's, yeah, it's pretty cold. I'll, uh, I'll keep them as quiet as I can and I'm probably not gonna do a too many videos out here I, I, and I'll probably do some outside when I'm up here too but as I have ideas especially that book's been bouncing around on the boat for a while so uh, I just happened to pull it out today and I kind of got a kick out of it and it reminded me of that list that I wrote a long time ago so anyway thanks for putting up with the quality of these videos and uh, I plan on having better quality videos when I get home. I'm going to get a new video editing program and I've got this light now and you won't hear all this background noise. So thank you for watching. Whoa man. <laughs> that was cool. That is cool.